we'll try this again. Try again. When I say hallelujah, we say amen. 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 Yeah? Amen. Yeah? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. All right. So, it's a privilege to be here. I want to thank Pastor Christine kindly when I, when I landed. I was so excited uh, about the uh, opportunity and the privilege to come in this house. Because the Lord has done so much for us here. Uh, With your permission, uh, Pastor Christine, Michael, uh, if you want to just, I want to bring the attention back to Jesus. Amen. I want to bring the attention back to Jesus. Amen. Uh, it's about him. Amen. It's about him. Yes, sir. It's about him. Hallelujah. He's the one. He's the one I want to worship. He's the one we want to worship. He's a king. In the presence of a king, there's a certain decorum. There's a certain attitude you have when the king is in the room. There's a certain mindset you have when the king is in the room. If an earthly authority had walked in the room, things will be done differently. Let's not get too familiar with the Lord. He's worthy to be honored. Young man, honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. Everybody just, I want you to look within yourself and behold the glory of God. Behold Jesus all his splendor. Forget everything else, children included. See Jesus. See Jesus. See him in our midst. And give him the honor that is due to us now. Everybody to stand up, please. 
There's a sound inside of you that you have to release. Release it to the king. Release it. It doesn't matter if you can sing or not. Just release it. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Worship Him from your spirit. Worshiping the Lord. It's not about the sermon. It's not about man. It's not about a woman. It's about lifting up Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshipped. Enter in. Enter in into worship. Enter in into worship. Let's enthrone His presence. Let His presence take over. Take over. There's a gift inside of you that God longs to re receive. There's a gift inside of you that must be released through your voice. It's the sound of worship. It's the sign of worship. It's the sound of worship.
Father, we worship you. Oh, Spirit of the living God. Oh, you are worthy. Nobody but you. Nobody but you deserves our worship. Not a job. Not a status. It is you. You deserve the worship. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. Oh, God. Let your river flow in our midst. Let us see your face as you join God. So that we can worship you even more. Reveal yourself, O oh God. Well, in this moment, in all your majesty, in all your glory. Father, our frail words cannot describe you properly. So receive our worship. Receive our tears of gratitude. Oh God. Thank you, Lord. If it wasn't for you, oh God, we wouldn't be here. So we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Have your way. Glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just stay in this atmosphere. You know when uh, Pastor Christine asked me, I'm just turn it down a little bit if you could, thank you. Uh, when Pastor Christine asked me, well, I called her, I told her I have you in town and love to come at this. Thank you so much. Always so helpful. Thank you. Uh, ask me, can, can I have a watch so I don't abuse the time and I can just keep track of how much time I have? I can have just my phone or just a clock or somebody's phone just so I can see. Uh, so I called Pastor Christine. I said, I'm in town. Love to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, love to see you guys. And they said, You want to preach? I said, No. Uh, and she said, Oh, yes, you are. I said, no, ask the Lord. And he said, yeah, the Lord said, yes. <laughs> That's like in 30 seconds. I said, how can you hear from God so quickly? Because I hear from him 24-7. True. Right? Uh, so, because I, take, I don't take lightly being around an audience and being given the privilege to speak and to share, I don't take it lightly. So, I wanted to, I went to inquire of the Lord. I said, Lord, what would I speak about? I started praying and I started searching the Lord and just sifting through my own thoughts and my own soul. Um, the Lord said, just point them to me. Show your testimony. Hallelujah. Because my testimony is one of, is one that glorifies the Lord, that points to Jesus. Amen. And my life has no meaning other than glorifying Jesus Amen. and pointing people to him. Uh, so what's going to happen here is that I'm just going to take us progressively through what God has done in my life. Yeah. And a lot of it has gone through uh, Blazing Holy Fire. And we've walked together, Sister Chantal, Stephen, and they've witnessed a lot of this. And some of you don't know me. I'm a child of this house. The Lord has visited us, my wife and I. Yes, uh, yes. You will hear more about her later oh, on uh, in this house. And I always say, I don't choose a church. The Lord appoints you at a church. Because you have a role to play. You have a responsibility to play. And because of what's inside of you, the gift that God has put in you, has a role to play in this church. Hallelujah. Nobody gets to be a spectator. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets to come and sit down and get fed and go home and then come back the next day. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that need to be done. Hallelujah. God has needed us together Amen. for a purpose. Hallelujah. We all have a role to play. Amen. And the Holy Spirit has equipped us with His Spirit and His Spirit will guide us and will tell us what is our responsibility. 
So then we have to be faithful and be held accountable. That once we know what the Lord expects us to do at the place where we are, now we need to walk in obedience. Because it's in the place of obedience that the Lord reveals himself. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And I've witnessed it in my life time and time again. And a lot of times the obedience that the Lord requires will make you bleed. It will hurt. It will hurt. But our Lord also, Jesus, is a supreme example of obedience that hurt. His took him to the cross where he died a painful humiliating death mm. but then his reward is the greatest reward of so people of God as we share as we're here please stay in tune with the spirit of God Amen. do not get distracted this is a prophetic moment that's the reason why it was important for us to go into worship so if we can minimize the movements we can just we can just stay in the atmosphere so we can hear clearly from God. Amen. I don't think you guys are interested in me coming here and pretend like I know everything there is in the Bible and the three steps to do this and the four steps to I don't think that's what this is about. Uh, this is a solemn moment where we're in the presence of God Amen. and this Holy Spirit is ministering. And we're going to point to the Lord. Amen. I was born in the Congo. Uh, I lived there for 13 years and then my family moved to Belgium. Uh, when I was in the Congo, I gave my life to Jesus. I was nine. I was on fire for God. Uh, and my mother, the church we went to, again, the church that the Lord had chosen for us, uh, they really preached the word of God but also the ministry of prayer. We learn how to pray. We learn how to be before God. So as we were growing in that environment, my fire and love for God was really kindled. And then we moved to Belgium. And in Belgium, my father forbade me from going to church. So I was 13. Then from there, my fire was quenched. 13 to 23 when I came to America for college I totally enough I totally went astray to all the mothers here I want to tell you something even the fathers who have children teach your children in the way that they should go and when they are old they won't depart from it Amen. even when I was in the world Doing my thing, doing my thing, something within me reminded me of the words I heard the men of God say, of the words that I heard my mother say. And I would wake up at night in tears, knowing I was living a life that God didn't approve of. I know, even in the midst of my sin, I knew. Why is that? Because the seed of the word was planted in me. So as we go, and I'm sharing my testimony, I will bring us back to what the Bible says and tell us how it refers to us and how it's applicable to us. So that's one for the mothers, for the fathers, for your parent, for the parents. Teach your kids in the way that they should go. Bring them to church. Yes, they are moving, jumping around and acting like they can't hear. They are hearing. Right. The word is penetrating Amen. because the word is spirit. Amen. It's spirit and life. Yes. And that life is being deposited in them. Amen. And that life will stay with them. Amen. That life will stay with them. Even in the culture where people are in, there's a lot of indoctrination. There's a lot of confusion about identity, about who people should be, what people should want, what people should become. Let the word be their foundation. Amen. Let the word of God. So that's our responsibility as parents. 
the world is bombarding them. The world is bombarding them with what they ought to be, what they ought to do, what they ought to wear, what they ought to show. But this is our foundation. Amen. Because this is yet to fail. Amen. So, at age 23, so I had a, I came to America, I was living my, I was doing my thing, but age 23, I graduated from college, I was now ready to play professional basketball. Uh, during that time, I went through a lot of adversity. I got injured, and through my injury, the Lord really grabbed my attention. The Bible says that with cords of love, he brought him to the desert where he could speak to them. That was my desert. So sometimes we go through adversity in life. We go through very tough situations where nothing seems to work. And you know I'm African, so we were kind of, oh, what uncle, what auntie is doing things back home? You know, why am I getting hurt now? You know, that kind of stuff. But it had nothing to do with that. Right. The Lord wanted to give my attention. Amen. And the Lord, I, I got injured, couldn't work, so it became so long. It started a long period of just the Lord reminding me who I was, why, why I was, why I was on this earth. So, you know, when I came to, I will never forget, when I came to Christ, <laughs> When I came to Christ, nobody preached to me. I would wake up at night. The Lord would visit me and I would feel the strong presence of God. And I would feel so filthy. I would feel the weight of my sins on me. And the Lord, the Lord, I knew that was God because it's only in the presence of holiness that you realize you feel. You only know you are poor when you see a rich person. You only know you're dirty when you see somebody that's clean. So when the Lord visited me, I knew I was dirty. I needed, I needed to be cleansed. And the Lord told me, God is not mocked, but you reap, but you will sow. It's time to make a decision. And I fought like that for three, four nights. I was just not surrendering. This is the part where it gets good, I think. During that time, we have mothers here. Mothers, please raise your hand. Okay. Does anybody have anybody in their family you really want God to save? Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hands lifted, hands lifted. Is anybody? Yes. During that time, when I would wake up at night and nobody was preaching to me, I found out years later that my mother was fasting oh, for me, for my life. Mm. She fasted for six days mm. and she was working. And I gave my life to Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is to say, when we go through things and you see loved ones, family members that are lost out there don't get don't don't lose hope our place our prayer our place of battle is in our knees on our knees Amen. That's it. on our knees that's right that's where we fight that's where we war for them that's where we claim their souls back that's where we declare the word of god over them yes. over our children maybe children that have gone astray mm. maybe a brother maybe a sister now we declare the word we declare the word through fasting, through pray, however the Lord leads you. But understand, I, no, nobody came to speak to me in that room. Mm. But the Lord heard the prayer of a woman. Hallelujah. The Lord heard the prayer of a woman. Amen. And he came and visited me. Thank you, Jesus. So, after I gave my life to Christ, my journey began. Uh, I was fortunate enough to play professional basketball in Italy. Greece, over Europe, and then I came back to the U.S. also, had good success, met my wife, Magali, here in Denver, Colorado, and the way I met my, any single people in the room, singles, okay, 
So, because of the lifestyle I had lived, the Lord had a lot of cleansing to do. Salvation is free. That's right. But then sanctification is a whole process. That's right. There's some habits I had acquired. There's some mindsets that the Lord needed to set me free from. Amen. So when I became a professional basketball player, I had a lot of time to spend alone with God. Mm -hmm. The importance of intimacy. Mm -hmm. In those moments after work was done, I would come and just be with God. And the Lord would work on me. And I would pray in the spirit, in the understanding. I would spend time in the word and let the Lord reveal himself to me. Okay. Uh, and when I was ready, the Lord said, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, when I'm ready to meet a woman, Please let me know. Because I surrendered my life completely to him. I and I wanted him. nothing but his timing. That's right. And then I met my wife. And I want to say this to people who are believing God for a partner. Delight yourself in the Lord. Amen. Delight yourself in the Lord. Amen. Because during that time, the Lord became my delight. And I was delighting in him. I was... I was communing with him in such a way that if he had never given me a woman or a wife, I would be good. He's all I need. And in that mindset, the Lord put into my heart the desires that I should, the desires that he has for me. Amen. So anytime we pray, if you pray, believe, if we pray according to his will, he will grant whatever we ask for. So he puts in my he put in my heart. His desire is for me, and I pray him back to him. What does that mean exactly? I went to God, and I was very specific about what I wanted in my wife. And the Lord fulfilled each one of them and went beyond. Amen? Hallelujah. Is this resonating with anybody? Please understand, I'm saying this. This is to point to Jesus and his word. And how it's applicable in our lives. Amen. He became my delight. He gave me some desires. I prayed them back to him. He fulfilled them. Amen. And he gave me a lovely wife. We're going on 18 years of marriage now. Thank you, Jesus. My wife. My wife is from the Congo. We met in Denver, Colorado. I'll spare you the details of how we met and etc. A, 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 a great woman of God, a prayer warrior. Filled with the spirit, uh, my partner, she's incredible. She's my rock. But <laughs> our story is one of perseverance. It's one of trials where we really saw, we've seen the, the hand of God manifested. After I retired from basketball, through a series of circumstances, we came here. And then God planted us in this church. We were struggling to have children. In fact, we had three miscarriages back to back to back. They were very painful. And each one of them, in each one of them, there was a certain level of pain that came with it. And each time, I remember the first time I'm thinking, okay, well, all right, uh, it happens to everybody. And okay, this is us. One thing I told the Lord, because, you know, we believe the word and, and we say, surely God is going to protect me and he's a protector. But the Lord is also sovereign over the affairs of our lives. God has, etern has eternity in mind when it comes to our lives. For he has planted eternity in the heart of man. So as we go through things that we do not understand, I didn't understand why my wife had to miscarry. I come to church. I love you. I worship you. I don't live a sinful life. You know, okay, all right, God, this is your, the one-off, okay. But then it happened again. And the doctor sat there, I remember looking at me very arrogantly, like, oh, there's nothing good that's going to come out of that womb. She's not able to conceive. It's not. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, okay, well, you so you just don't know the type of God I serve. Amen. Okay, okay. Amen. And my wife still lost the baby. And by then, I wanted to die. I said, Lord, I don't even know if your word is true. Because you say you would protect me. You say you would watch over me. 
the streets, there shall be no miscarriage in your midst. Mm. My God, you say you will, re the, the, you will rebuke the devourer. Mm. I'm a tither. Why am I going through this, Lord? Like, you might as well just take my life. If this is not true, did I believe? Is this, is your word true? And I would love to tell you, yeah, I was there and, and I believed through it all. I never doubted false. I was a mess. I was a mess. I remember walking to the pharmacy, going to get medication for my wife who had, had a C-section. And I said, Lord, I would rather just, just take my life now. I just wasn't bold enough to commit suicide. But I was just like, I don't want to live. I don't want to live. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And my hope in seeing the intervention of God in that situation wasn't rewarded. So I felt sick, sick. And I had answers that I couldn't, I, my wife had questions that I couldn't answer. And as a, as a husband, as a husband, it's hard because we are solution givers, mm -hmm. right? Like we, we like to find solutions. Right. So I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I said, God, <laughs> uh, I know you too well uh, to, to curse you or to walk away from the faith. But this is what we'll do. I want to have nothing to do with you because you've disappointed me. Mm. And it hurts. Mm. And I'm broken. Mm. You know, <laughs> some of us, when you've, when the Lord has visited you, some of us can't go back. <laughs> when you sin too much of His glory, you can't go back. Even if you tried to. Even if you tried to. I couldn't, I couldn't go back to clubbing. I couldn't go back to live like somebody who didn't know God. So, even that Okay, I'm done with you. You do your thing. I do my thing. I don't even know what that looked like because I still, I still love him. I still loved him. I was just mad at him. You know, couples get into arguments, and and there's times where it's just I can't. I just, I just, I just, uh, you don't even want to talk to her, right? But you're still married. You're still in the same house, and then she'll come and say, your food is ready. You know. Yeah. And, and then you eat and you're done like, uh, thank you for the food. <laughs> and then you keep it moving. Right. You know, at some point and you want to maybe watch TV and she's watching TV. So you just go to the other room or, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. But you are still married. Right. And that's, that's the right. point that I'm trying to make. That's right. And when we went through that ordeal, remember one day I'm in my studio. I'm also an artist. And... I miss the Lord because during that time I stopped praying. I stopped praying, and but I missed them. I missed my fellowship with Jesus. That's why I want to encourage everybody here. Please understand, like our walk with God is a real one. That's right. That when you connect, Jesus is a person who longs to be known. That's right. Who longs to be understood. Hallelujah. Who longs to be cherished the way He cherishes us. That's right. And it takes work understanding and when you come before his presence it's like if, if we have a is, is it okay if i move a little bit all right. okay all right uh you know when you have a relationship with somebody and, and and you come and and every day i'm not telling you the same things i'm not repeating the same prayers to you so there's days when you enter in the presence of god right because you've established a, t a set time to worship and spend time with them. And some days, maybe you offer him a song. Another day, maybe you come in, and, in silence and just ask him how he's doing, what's on his heart. And that is intimacy. Mm. But in intimacy, there are surprises. <laughs> right? There, I remember as a professional basketball player, I would come home from practice, I would hurry up, and I would just sit on my chair, and I would just, I would just you know how much I love to soak oh, in his sure. presence. <laughs> And wait, and there's some days where the Lord would manifest himself as a father. And just so you know, I was about 26, 27. So I wasn't old. That's right. right? So, so young people, please understand, you have to pursue a relationship with the Lord. Amen. Pursue it. Amen. How do you pursue it? Your most precious commodity is time. Amen. That's your most precious commodity. 
What you do, you become what you do with your time. Your relationship with the Lord becomes what you do with your time with him. So I would come and sit in his presence and just listen to him. And sometimes he would manifest himself as a father. But then there's one day where I came in and he, he manifested himself as a friend. And all of a sudden I'm just laughing. And I'm joking. If somebody was there, would think I'm crazy. But that's intimacy. I am this, hopefully, this is stirring you up to okay. seek intimacy with the Lord. Amen. Because a lot of people get bored in the things of God because they don't understand that this is a living book and the God that we serve is a living God. He has a personality, He has things He likes, He has things that make him laugh. He has a sense of humor. He has things that turn him on about us. Come on, church. So when we worship him, when we worship him, our words, you know, when you meet a girl, I'm going to talk to men a little bit, and you come in and you got to have a certain swagger about you, right? So the things you say, the things you express them, you, you know, you put a little bit extra in it. Right, and, and and when ladies, same thing, same thing. When you go and you know, just somebody you like, you kind of just that, that, yeah, that you know, a little bit more and, and whatever, yeah, whatever you do, yeah. So when we come in the presence of God, come on, we got a romance to keep. Come on, come on. Am I saying something here? You got a romance to keep a little bit, and the more you do, the more He reveals Himself. None of us want to go in a relationship with somebody every day. You know what they're going to say. <sighs> they're going to sing the same song. And then they're going to have the same routine. If you've been married, how many of us know that sometimes you got to switch things up? Come on. Sometimes you go to this restaurant. Sometimes you go here. Sometimes we go for a walk. Sometimes you go to the movies. Sometimes we just hang out, Netflix, and chill. Come on, right? And our relationship with God, our relationship with God, it's the same. It's the same. And in that mindset, we've gotten to know the Lord. And that's what I missed. That's the reason I missed him. Because I wasn't having that anymore. I remember falling on my knees and saying, Lord, I miss you. But you've hurt me. You've hurt me badly. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't a believer, going through this would have been easier. Because I'll say it's just life. Mm -hmm. But because I knew that you have the power mm -hmm. to prove that doctor wrong, you have the power to save my babies, but you chose not to. Mm. You disappointed me. Mm -hmm. Heal my heart. Heal me. I love you. I need you too much to do life without you. I need you too much to do life without you. Thank you. So all of a sudden, the scripture that says, where can I go away from your presence? Now it makes sense. Now it made sense. I could not escape him. I'm in his hands regardless of what I go through. That's right. So we fast forward, my wife is pregnant again. I'm just like, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, most people when the wife come and say I'm pregnant, they get excited. For us, like, I'm, preg I'm pregnant. It was like, oh, yeah. it was like I was having a good day. <laughs> you know? So again, we go through it, we go through the pregnancy, and my wife miscarriages again. And the crazy part is, by then, I'm just like, Lord, I'm prepared. If you don't want me to have a family, it's okay. See, I was still hurt. And we were still, right? right. We were still crying together. Right. We were still praying together. The hurt was there. But my commitment to him had not wavered. Amen. And that's why my transform that's how my transformation with God began. See, I always marvel at Job. Somebody who loses, you know, we, 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 we go through the Bible and we read these stories and and we're kind of like, man, Israel, man, what a, man, they're just stubborn. They got all these idols, man, they just don't want to 
Listen, God said, get rid of them. How many times is he going to have to say it? Like, that just don't listen. Like, hold on. So you get to the, so he took you out of Egypt. Right. right takes you this far, did all these miracles for you, and you still now? Man, I, Lord, God forbid. But then God kind of just reminds you, yeah, okay. Then you start looking at your own life. Where God, where, where, how far God is taking you. And some of us, you know, the weather, <laughs> there's Africans here, so I'll say something that non Africans probably won't understand. When God gave you papers, you know, <laughs> and you were looking for papers, and then He gave you papers, and then He did this miracle for you, that miracle for you, provided a job for you, gave you a family, you know, came through in this situation, but then you face one situation, just like you start doubting, it's no different than what. Israelite did. That's right. That's right? right. So now with that in mind, I'm thinking about Job. Job, the same day somebody comes to tell you, hey man, all your houses are burned. Oh. All your children are dead. Yes. All your investment, the stock, the money you had in the stock market, gone. Oh. It's gone, gone, gone. And he tears his clothes oh. and he worships. Mm. He worships. Right. He worships. Mm. He worships. He worships. So we got to get a greater understanding with worship. I can guarantee you he didn't sit there and start singing. He didn't put his song and start singing. I don't think that's what that worship was. Right? I don't think that's what that worship was. So as my wife and I went through our old ordeal and we said, so be it kept walking with the Lord. We came here and I remember a particular night where the Lord did a miraculous intervention on my wife through Pastor Christine. And she was here. If she was here, I would just, I think it's, it wouldn't be proper for me to say what she went through. But all I know is that she had a breakthrough. She had a breakthrough. And we know it. A few years later, I'm pregnant. I said, <laughs> I tried to act like I wasn't worried, but I was just like, here we go again. But the Lord reassured me, these enemies that you see, you will see them no more. And I'm reminded, I'm reminded again, the importance of the prophetic, not only at church, the man in your home, in your home. That new year, the Lord had me write down some things on paper. He had me execute a prophetic act entering into the year. I will spare the details, but because we knew how to touch heaven, inquire of heaven, we were able to execute a prophetic act that the Lord instructed us to do in harmony with what happened at church. And the Lord broke a powerful yoke that was restraining us. Amen. Amen. Is Jesus being glorified? Hallelujah. Are we getting understanding Hallelujah. the ways of God? Amen. Is this still pointing to Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. So she was pregnant. And then, you know, women, you know, as you go through pregnancy, there's different pains you go through. Here's what, here's what a history of pain does to you. It leaves trauma and memories. So now when you go through something that resembles what you had gone through, you tense up. Even if, even if God has given you, if, even if God has given you deliverance, there is still part of you. There's still part of you that, uh, you spill some water, big grass. So, as we go through trials, sometimes the memory of what we went through messes with us a little bit. You know, I always compare it to when, when, uh, when Israel was crossing the Red Sea.
Amen. So when Israel was crossing the Red Sea, again, we read the Bible, God has gifted us with imagination, right? Just imagine, you with your family, you are crossing all this water. Is it a sea or an ocean? What, what is the Red Sea? Is it a sea? or It's got to be a sea, right? It's a Red Sea. Yeah. There goes that Metro State education right there for you. <laughs> As you are crossing the sea with your family, you see the waters to the left and to the right. That's right. There's no way in the world you're not saying, come on, kids, hurry up. We don't know how long this water is going to hold. That's come right. on, come on, boo-boo. Come, come on, come on, come on. Everybody. Everybody, come on, hurry up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right? God is still at work. That's right. God is still working. But you're still human. Right? It's like, come on, come on, leave your shoe, come on, leave it there. Oh, mom, I know my dog. Leave your dog there, come here, go! <laughs> you know, etc. So, as we were going through that, and my wife, my wife is like, yeah, I'm pregnant, and then, oh, I have this pain. And this pain reminded us of what she had gone through before, so we tend to tense up, and every step of the way, the Lord our shepherd will remind them, no, these children will be born. And time and time. And time and time again. And then God bless us with twins. Hallelujah. And, and please, and this reveals to me, to me, again, pointing to the Lord, this whole episode. There's no twins in my family or her family. And we weren't trying. Uh, we were just living life. So the Lord, the Lord gave us twins. He started a new history in our family. And the kids were born... The Lord told us, told us about their destiny and what they would accomplish. And it was just an amazing time when the Lord was revealed. And we got to witness the Lord who restores. Amen. The Lord who restores. Amen. And we've gone through the entire journey. And we rejoice here together. That's and the Lord restored us. Amen. But now you say, well, you know, how come our story has blessed so many people? Amen. Our pain served to witness to so many people. Yes. My wife today, she will talk to countless women who are having child uh, problems there, you know, having children. I've talked to husbands whose wives have miscarried, and I understand why do we have a no? The Lord needed us, needed us to be a vessel that He can trust to carry that pain because that pain was going to produce life. Amen. You know, in brokenness. That's when the light of God is manifested the most. Amen. And I stand here as a witness yes, and, and, and just a witness of the love of God, yes. of the power of God, yes. of the sovereignty of God. Yes. The things that he was able to do in my house, through my children, with my wife, mm -hmm. all point to him. There's absolutely nothing, there's nothing I've earned nothing that I deserve and all of it is by grace Amen. all of it is by grace Amen. I want to encourage us to really enter into intimacy with God an in intimacy that reveals who God is to you Amen. because God reveals himself different ways to many people Amen. Right? there are seasons in life seasons of life where God chooses to reveal himself perhaps as a father and then, as a king, That's right. as a shepherd, yes. as a lover, yes. as a healer, yes. as a deliverer, Amen. as a provider. Amen. Now, he's our father. Yes. And he, but there's moments where he will accentuate certain traits of his character. Yes. I just lost my job. You probably couldn't tell by my countenance. Because I don't look at it as needing an employer because the Lord, the Lord is sovereign over my life. Amen. And the Lord has promised that he will provide for me. Amen. And our Father is a very, very responsible Father. Amen. He's a very responsible Father. Yes. Even when we are faithless, he is faithful. Even when we are faithless, he is even when we don't have the strength to believe, he's still God. Amen. Right? Amen. But I walk with him. I walk with him. 
reveals who he is. So our commitment is to just get into his presence. Get to know him. Get into his word. Right? So if you go to Psalm, you guys got to bow no pros, amen, all this talking. Can we get one verse? I'll give you one verse. I'll give you one verse. Right? Even if I give many. Uh, if you go to Psalms 32, verse 8. Psalm 32, verse, uh, verse 7. Verse 7 to 8. Somebody tell me where you were there. I know this generation were more into phones, so when you say when you say look to the Bible, <laughs> look to the Bible, man, those pages get sticky. <laughs> it takes a little longer to get there. Just young people, Psalm is in the first part of the Bible, the Old Testament. Yeah, that part. <laughs> okay, we're good with there. Yeah, yeah. Because now you know we can get on our phones, and then so so it's easier that way. So, Psalms, I'll read it. Psalm 33, verse 7 to 8. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. This is the part that excites me here. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. I read it again. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. So this is an all-powerful God, all-knowing God, Amen. who says about the affair of your life. Amen. I will guide you. Yes. I won't just guide you, but I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. That is significant to me because... God has endowed us with all different gifts and skills, right? There's some things we all do well. You can wake up out of bed. This is your gift. You do this, right? And our society kind of individuality is not celebrated very much, at least when it, when it comes to doing life, right? What do I mean by that? Is is They tell you, you're born you go to school, you go to school, you think you have good grades, you get a good job, get a good job, get a wife, get a wife, work, have kids, send them to college, uh, send them to college, and then there's one I'm missing, retire and then die. <laughs> pretty much, right? That's, that's pretty much. But our God has different path for us. Amen. I remember when I told my auntie, one time, she asked, what do you want to do with your life? I said, Auntie, I, I, I've never seen myself going to work at five, coming back at nine, and then living in one place my whole life. Man, she rebuked me so hard. She said, Patrick, this is how Auntie sound. You guys know this. You have to be responsible. You are an irresponsible boy. You need to grow up. What do you mean you don't see yourself? Everybody gets job. Everybody works from nine to Who do you think you are? You have to be responsible. That's not the way to do life. <laughs> Little did she know that God had a different purpose Amen. for me. Hallelujah. And I was just speaking the things that the Holy Spirit had deposited within me. And truthfully, my job is one, there's no nine to five, That's and I'm all over the world, and God has allowed me to see amazing things. Amen. But imagine mm. if I had succumbed or surrendered mm. to that way of living. Now I miss God's plan totally. That's, right. That's why the scripture is significant, significant to me when he says, I will lead you, I will guide you in the best, best pathway Amen. for your life. Amen. Amen. Amen? So when you look to Jesus and you go to Jesus in this moment of intimacy, he longs to tell you, this is what I have in store for you. Amen. So young people, don't go out trying to seek, and you want to know what you, what you should do in life? Go and spend time with the one who actually no. has designed the architect hey. of your life. The one who actually has a plan for what he wants you to do. Hey. And by the way, he's equipped you with things that are going to make you so unique that the whole world will flock to you. Because your gift will make room for you. And he's the gift 
giver and the gift that he has put in you when he's in the right environment and all of a sudden you're experiencing all kinds of blessings because you are where the one who said, I will guide you Amen. in the best pathway for your life. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Right? That's why the world can mock Jesus all they want. Mm. But man, I tell you, I tell you, mm. wisdom suggests that's where you want to go. Amen. That's where you want to get plans for your life. That's, right. that's where you want to get direction for your life. Hallelujah. That's where you want to get instruction for your life. Thank you, Jesus. That's where you want to wait. Where do you want me to go? Left or right? Wait, I wait. Oh, but God, with everybody's getting houses, wait. Everybody's getting promotions. Wait. Everybody's getting married. Wait. But everybody's getting this. Wait. How long, God? Wait. My friends are driving this kind of car. Wait. How long? He knows what's the best pathway. But then he shows up for you, and all of a sudden, nobody recognizes you. Because the king has said, okay, your time has come. Now you're ready to receive what I have for you. I've equipped you. You went through what you needed to go through to be able to handle the glory that I'm going to place in you. I've done the work. Trials have, have shaped you into what you need to be. Now I can trust you. You can go before the nations and you are going to represent me. You are going to represent a living God. You're going to have the knowledge of me and you're going to have to represent me and I will sit right there with you because you're not going to embarrass me. I will make your character strong so when people go left and right and trying to fall for this, fall for that, no, you will keep your eyes on me because we have a relationship, because you know me and I know you and I'm your father and you know my heart for you and I know your heart for me and I have your heart so I can trust you with the riches of my kingdom. I will guide you in the best for your life. And I've seen this in my life. I've seen people, I've seen people, Lord, but he's, he's He's got a family. He got a house. Lord, I'm still living in a hotel room. Yes. My wife and I live in a hotel room for six months. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Live in a hotel room. But the things that God has done for us. Oh. My children don't know this. No, <laughs> they don't know this. But the things that God has done for us oh. is open doors. Oh. We've walked into places. We're like, what are we even doing here? It's God. It's God. Is this giving somebody hope? Is this stirring somebody to be excited about walking with the Lord? Our God is not about theory. He's very real. He's very real. Yes, Lord. He's very real. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve the glory. And the honor, Lord, we will worship and praise the holy name. You deserve the glory. And the honor, Lord, we lift our voice in worship and praise the holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no Teach us 
intimacy with you. Deep intimacy that produces fruit. Intimacy where things get conceived in the spirit. I won't speak a language, so I know we have children here, so I'm going to be very careful. When intimacy occurs and there's conception, yeah, everybody understands what I'm saying? It takes a while for what's inside of you to manifest. Nine months, typically, and then the baby's born. But through that time, nobody knows initially and then eventually people start to notice yes. what am I saying ah. in these moments of intimacy with God there will be some things that he deposits in, in you and you, may, and you may not even know it you probably are not going to know it but stay the course keep walking with the Lord the Christian walk is one, the believer's walk is one of transformation. We become. We become. We become. It's interesting that this, we say she became pregnant. Yes. And over time, what's inside of you begins to form and take expression. That's right. And it gives birth. So the things that you experience in your intimacy, during your times of intimacy with God, will begin to sh take form and shape in the natural. Yes. You begin to manifest a certain behavior, certain reaction to, to, to the world that is in harmony with the ways of the kingdom you are becoming. Until you begin out of you, begin to come, so some things begin to come out. A life, rivers of living water. All of a sudden, you are treating people different. People are responding to you differently. You are adding value to your place of work. You are ministering with more power and authority. You are hearing the Lord more clearly because you hear His voice and He's deposited things in you. And you are bringing solutions to your environment. Birth out of that place of intimacy with God. I know I said a lot. In closing, I want to bring us back to that place of intimacy. Amen. Get to know Him. Be intentional about going and romancing the King. Yes. Know Him. Know Him outside of church. Know Him outside of Pastor Christine is going to do her work. She's going to do her thing. She's going to be on fire before God and tell you to pray and dwell in prayer. That's good. But that shouldn't be the first time you've encountered the Lord today. Amen. 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 Pastor, I think I'm closing. I want to thank the Lord for this privilege. I want to thank this house for allowing me again to come and share a few words. All glory goes to God. If I can just say like, a prayer. Can I just pray for yes. us real quick in closing? Yes. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this moment. Thank you for the privilege and the joy to be in your house. God, thank you for a country where we can worship freely. There are places where this is illegal for believers to get together. But we have the freedom to come together and lift up your name. We are thankful. Thank you. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. Holy Spirit, you spoke. Let these words dwell richly in our hearts and produce fruits and fruits that will remain. Let our lives, O oh God, point to you always. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, sovereign God, you are worthy of our worship. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be honored. There's nothing good we have that didn't come from you. Our very breath of life comes from you. Our health comes from you. Receive all the glory and all the honor. And on this day where we are celebrating fathers, Father, we celebrate you. 
You are the very example we follow. We want to be just like you. Thank you for your spirit, which empowers us to live up to your extremely high standards. For your ways are so much higher than our ways. Lord, I pray that you will continue to glorify your name in our lives. Reveal Jesus through us. Give us the stamina to stay in your presence. Give us the stamina and the discipline to seek you with consistency. Give us the stamina to come before your presence ready to honor you. Show us the pathway to your heart. Show us the pathway to pleasing you, Father. You deserve our worship. Receive all the glory in our lives. You deserve it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.